In this video, we're going to walk through using the API at HaveIBeenOwned.com. Now, if you're not familiar with the website HaveIBeenOwned.com, it is run by a security researcher named Troy Hunt, who has done a lot of collection of information across the internet regarding security breaches. One of the things that he has collected is hacked passwords and hacked usernames. And then you can go to his webpage and see if you have been included in any of those hacks. For instance, if I open up my web browser and I go to have I been owned.com, owned with the P, and then you can type in your email or phone number right there and it will tell you, let's see, example at example.com, it will tell you if that account has been found in a hacked situation in the past. For instance, we could see, yeah, there were several breaches that this account was found in and therefore his password probably wasn't valid or is should probably be changed. Even though some of these attacks are from oh, 2018, they're kind of old. Hopefully you've changed your password since then, but maybe you haven't. So definitely check it out. Uh, again, it's from a security researcher. I kind of trust them, but your mileage may vary. Along with this web portal, however, he does also have an API or an application programming interface, which we can see at this address right here. Have I been known.com slash API slash V3 for version three of the API. And here we can see there is a lot of documentation about the API. We can see if people have been found as part of breaches, we can see if there have been uh, password pastes that have been found. We can see if the passwords have been owned or previously hacked, as well as future reading. This last one right here, the owned passwords, is the one I'm curious about. If I click the overview here, it gives me a brief overview of how to use the online API. This right here, the searching by range, is what we're going to be looking at. And we can see that it gives us a little bit of information. First off, it says that this is a GET request, which for the most part is what we've been working with. We then go to this URL right here. And at the very end, we put the first five characters of a hash of our password. Uh, specifically, it says up here in the documentation is a SHA-1 password hash. It then says, as we keep reading through, it will return a list such as this, and then which is uh, a list of hashes for everything from the sixth character of your hash on, and then you search through those to see if your hash is found in there. So let's walk through this and let's see how we can do this. First thing I need to do is I need to find a SHA-1 hash of my password. Now there's ways we can do this in Python, but since we're just doing a quick example, we can actually find this online. And I'm just going to go to Google and I'm going to type in um, online SHA-1 hash. I don't want to restart Firefox. Line SHA-1 hash. There we go. And I'm just going to choose this first one uh, from passwordgenerators.net. And it wants us to type in a some text down here in the in the box, and then it will give us a SHA-1 hash down but here. So for a very simple password, I'm going to go ahead and type in QWERTY. Now we're going to find out very quickly that we don't want to use this as our password and we'll find out why. So let's go ahead and oh, don't even need to click generate. We have our hash right down here. Great. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back to my notepad and paste it in right just so I have it right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the first five characters.
and then everything after those five characters. I'm just going to manually separate them out so I have them ready. So the API says I want to hit this URL and give it the first five characters of the hash. Now I can actually try this in my web page. Let's see. Or I'm sorry, in my web browser, and it returns back a whole bunch of information. I'm going to do the same thing through Postman just because it's a little bit easier to see and it's a important to get comfortable with the tools we should be using. So let's go ahead and actually let's just copy that URL back into Postman. So we still have a get request paste in the URL right here. Now at this point, I could actually start listing this as parameters. Uh, however, I'm not going to do that right now. But we'll click send. And then we see a large number of results coming back. And according to the documentation, this is separated out on the left hand side is the remaining portions of our hash. And then on the right hand side of the colon is the number of results that have been found with that hashed password. So let's look at the rest of our hash right here. Now the results that were returned to us are alphabetical, so we can actually start just looking for 73A, which I'm going to start doing. We're starting at zero, so I'm going to scroll down until I start seeing sevens. All right, too far, 73A, 73A, there's only one 73A in the results, and I'm pretty sure if I look at everything else that was, or look at the rest of my hash, uh, ending in 521E, 521E, that line right there, number 260, is our result. And we can see, yes, in fact, that has, that password has been found in many, many breaches. That is uh, 3.9 million breaches, or 3.9 million times has that password been found. Therefore, it probably is not a very secure password, and you probably shouldn't use it. Now, let's try a different password. Let's try something a little bit more interesting. And for that, I'm going to go back to my SHA generator. And I'm going to type in a random password. Uh, let's uppercase this. And let's do some. There we go. That's about as random of a password as you can get. And so now I'm going to do the same thing to see if that pops up. Let's copy that. Go back to our notepad. And again, I'm going to break this down into the two separate sections right there. So let's search. Let's do the same search with E01F5. Right there. Send. It still returns a lot of results down here. Let's see if the rest match up. Let's see, I need B886. So let's keep scrolling down. B's will be towards the bottom. B. So I go from B86 to B8B. So my B886 does not show up in the list. And I can confirm that if I wanted to keep looking through this. But that tells me that that password that I just randomly typed in there is in fact mostly secure it has not been found in a password breach at all and therefore will not be one that is commonly guessed by attackers if i try to use it on a web page so there's a great example of using a public api in order to test if your passwords are valid even if you were concerned about the validity of the other portions of the Have I Been Owned web page. This one actually is extremely secure because we're never sending the entire hash of the password. We are only sending the first five characters of the hash. 
And as we can see, there are hundreds and in fact, literally thousands or millions of permutations of those hashes. And therefore it is practically impossible of when I send this of guessing what my actual password is. The rest of the hash, well, it sends that to me and then I have to find it to see if I'm actually in that mix or not uh, in order to determine if my password is secure. So this method, yeah, even if I don't trust, have I been owned? This method is actually extremely secure to confirm that my password is safe or is extremely vulnerable.